Hey, hey, family, Marshawn Olanio here, your favorite life and relationship strategist, and I help Christian women that are married or in long-term relationships to stop feeling disconnected and unloved and shift you to feeling heard, understood, and appreciated. Now we're going to talk about how criticism damages your relationships. You know, a lot of times we get into our relationships and not many of us were taught how to be, how to show up, how to support, how to love, nor how to respect one another i.e. your partner. So many of us were not taught that in the homes and this is the things that we were taught in the homes were how to be toxic. No, that is not what your parent or guardian said, but it is the things that you witness. It is the things that you often seen. And now we're continuously thinking that those are the things that are normal, which they are not most of the time. The toxic energy, the toxic behaviors the always yelling, screaming, fussing, fighting, name calling, physically hurting one another, emotionally abusing one another, that all of those things, none of them are normal. And so because many of us from generation has been passed down to generation to generation to generation, we think that that is what is normal and how you should show up in your relationship. And all of those things actually destroy and kill the intimacy within your relationship. And one of the other things that actually kills and destroys the intimacy within your relationship is criticism, is being criticized, or if you are the criticizer to your partner that actually kills and destroys the intimacy within your relationship and literally it is damaging your relationship slowly but surely whether you recognize it or not so i am going to give you five things to literally think about and also to implement into your relationship because if you've been following marshawn o for any amount of time you know that my mission my mission is to decrease the divorce rate while simultaneously increasing the marriage rate one conversation at a time. So this is that conversation that I speak about. So the very first thing is, as I already actually mentioned it, is it destroys the intimacy. Think about this. If you are constantly criticized by the person that says they love you, air quotes on purpose, because many people are not realizing or recognizing what they're actually doing. But anytime you are overly criticized, now I'm not talking about constructive criticism here and there. No, that's not what I mean. Because each of us can actually learn something and become better by being constructive, um, constructively criticized. I am talking about where you feel that your partner can do no right. You focus solely on the negative. And when you do that, you are destroying your intimacy. Another thing to think about is literally... The people that you like to be around the most, whether it's your spouse included in this or not, the people that you like to be around the most are the people that make you feel the best about yourself, but also they just make you feel good, period. They make you feel good inside. They make you feel good about yourself. They are constantly lifting you up. You always are laughing with one another. You may even cry with one another, building that emotional connection with one another. Those are the people that you love to be around. Think about the people that we call our best friends. They are our best friends because they make us feel a certain type of way when we are in their company and vice versa. You also make them feel a certain type of way when you are in their company as well. And so think about if your spouse fits this mode or if you are the person that is criticizing, do you fit this mode? Is there something that you can change about how you are showing up? And if so, what are you willing to do in order to do, what are you willing to do differently in order to get different results? Because here's the thing, most of us are insane and we don't know. And literally the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again, expecting different results. There is no way that you are going to get different results by showing up and doing the exact same thing over and over and over again. So if you are a person that is destroying the intimacy by being the criticizer, you need to cut it out. <laughs> Especially if you do not want to lose the partner, your spouse, the person that you claim that you love, that you truly want to build your relationship and or marriage with. The second thing is that it widens the emotional distance, replacing all of that hugging, loving, cuddly, happy, uh, butterfly feeling 
within your body, replacing all of that with resentment and hostility. And again, this doesn't happen overnight. It's over time being criticized after criticized after criticized after criticized. Every little thing you cannot do right. And then all of a sudden, now you're being criticized for it. Whether it's taking out the garbage, whether it's washing the dishes, whether it's cooking the food, whether it's putting down the toilet seat, right? Whether it's paying the bills on time, whatever it is, you can never do anything right. Including but not limited to <laughs> maybe planting a garden and you don't have a green thumb like you thought you did. Right? So being criticized about any and everything. Also, let me just throw on the way that you drive, right? Being criticized over and over and over again, again, is destroying your intimacy. And of course it is a widening the emotional distance or widening the emotional gap. And as I mentioned before, the person that you're feeling the most connected to will be the person that you share your emotional side with. And honestly, that's how you are building these pair bonds, these deep connections is by sharing your emotional feelings about what's actually happening with you and what's going on, what you're dealing with. Um, what's the next step? Um, you're asking for advice, right? So that is the way that you are bonding, or at least one of the ways that you are bonding with your spouse or with your partner. The third thing is that whenever you criticize, overly criticize your partner and how it's damaging your relationship is that it's continuously triggering defensiveness due to your partner feeling attacked, especially if you are the person that is um, doing the criticizing. Your partner is always feeling attacked, which is why you always get a counter reaction because criticizing does not bring the person close to you. It actually pushes him or her away, further away. And so you think that whenever you are trying to get your partner to lose weight, for instance, you think by criticizing him or her saying, you know, how, how the, you don't look sexy anymore or your belly done, done lapped over, right? You got that done lap belly. It didn't lapped over your belt <laughs> or, you know, your butt looks this type of way, but it's never anything positive. And so you thinking that by criticizing them, by saying how much weight they have gained and um, how they are not sex, 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 sexy, <laughs> excuse me, to you, or that you are no longer sexually attracted to them is going to give them the motivation to get up in the morning or afternoon, whenever, put on their workout clothes and then go and do what they want to do. Now, that might happen for a period of time, but because it's not something that he or she wants to actually do, and, and here's the thing. Each and every one of us know when we have a few extra pounds, we don't need you as the spouse to tell us that we already know. Like I literally had to tell my husband this because uh, we're two different cultures. So in his culture, they believe that by criticizing and being um, specifically when it comes to um, the woman in particular being overweight, that they can just say X, Y, and Z, which is usually criti critical, right? Uh, talking about the body and the form and shape that she's going to get up and automatically want to work out and be sexy again for him. But she's not, she's not. And so what ends up happening, and this is in most cultures that I know of, right? So what ends up happening is we become rebellious. That little child that's within each of us now comes out. And because I don't want you to tell me what to do, instead of me just verbalizing and us always getting to arguments, I'm just going to do what I want to do. And so guess what? You're never going to see me in workout clothes, let alone working out because I don't want to, even though I know that that is something that is going to make you feel better. I'm going to feel sexier. I'm going to have more energy. I'm going to, you know, sleep better, et cetera. I'm not going to feel uh, sluggish anymore. All of that stuff. I know all of this stuff, but that inner child is making me be rebellious. So it is going to continue to trigger defensiveness. It is not again, it is not pulling the person closer to you. It is keeping the distance between the two of you. So triggering defensiveness. Number four, it actually leads to contempt. So the more that you criticize your partner, contempt comes into play. Now, what is contempt? Contempt is usually holding your partner in a negative light without giving them the benefit of the doubt. 
And I, I mentioned that before, but that is what contempt is. And is constantly what you see, what you believe about your spouse, nothing but negativity, nothing positive ever comes to the forefront of your brain about your spouse anymore. That is contempt. And research is actually shown by Dr. John Gottman, PhD. He has been working with couples for decades now. And his research has actually shown that whenever contempt comes into play, this is one of the number one factors on people getting a divorce. Now there are other factors, but this is one of the number one ways to determine if you and your spouse will get a divorce is when contempt shows up. Another way is how you guys argue, but I won't go into all of his things. If you want to look him up and see some of the signs that, you know, make you understand if you're headed for a divorce, then look up John Gottman, look up John Gottman and they are, and it's actually called the four Horseman, if you're interested, the four horsemen by Dr. John Gottman, PhD. So if you're interested in that, you can take a look at that, but yes, it leads to contempt and contempt is when you're holding your partner in a negative, uh, your partner, excuse me, in a negative light constantly. You can never see anything good. You're never focusing on the positive because you don't see any positive in your spouse. Contentment, that resentment, that hostility, all of that stuff is now being ingrained in you. And there's no way that you want to get close to a person that you don't see anything good about or good with, right? So if you want to change this stuff around, you can, but it does take some work and it also changes. It also takes a different mindset as well. The fifth and final thing is that criticizing your partner goes um, into survival mode. So anytime you are overly criticizing your partner, as I mentioned, those triggers are going to happen. And the survival mode is self-protection, withdrawal, distance, as I mentioned, and even sometimes substance abuse, just to get away from the reality. And really the reality is you as the criticizer. So if you're noticing that your partner is very distant from you, they're always self-protecting in the form of becoming defensive. They're always withdrawing from you, right? Or they're even doing something for substance abuse, alcohol, drugs, whatever, porn, whatever that substance abuse is. Maybe they're literally working all the time. That is a form of substance abuse. That is a form of something that you, you're trying to fill a void that is in your life, always working always working. Are you doing that literally to take care of the family or are you running away from something or even somebody? Now, if you need some help with any of this stuff, again, I am Marshawn Olanio, your favorite life and relationship strategist. And I help Christian women that are married or in long-term relationships to stop feeling disconnected and unloved and shift you to feeling hurt, understood, and appreciated one conversation at a time. And my mission is to de decrease the divorce rate while simultaneously increasing the comp <laughs> increasing the marriage rate. Again, one conversation at a time. So if you are ready to change your marriage around, if you are ready to change your relationship around so you can be better because the change that you seek is within you first. So if you are ready to do something about it, then click the link below, Get on my calendar and let's have a free 30 minute coaching conversation. Again, I'm changing lives one conversation at a time. If you are ready, if you are ready to change your entire trajectory of the way your relationship is headed, get on this conversation and let's talk about how you and I can help you get from where you are today to where you want to be tomorrow and beyond. I love you guys. There's nothing that you can do about it. And I will see you in the next video. All right now. Bye.